Hello, welcome to this Windows 11 beginner training series. From wherever you are watching this video, from any part of the world, I welcome you. In this lesson, we are starting from the very beginning. We're going to be talking about what Windows 11 is, what the desktop looks like, and how to navigate the start menu and taskbar in Windows 11. Even if you have never used a computer before, don't worry about that. I will take you step by step all through to the end. Now, what is Windows 11? Windows 11 is the latest operating system from Microsoft. An operating system is the main software that controls everything on your computer. It allows you to open programs, to save files, to browse the internet, and manage your desktop. If you have watched my first video on computer training for beginner lesson one, I made mention of operating system there, and I talk about what it is all about. But we are going to look at it in a practical terms and in detail this time around. Now, let's look at the improvement. What made Windows 11 different and better than the previous window because we said windows 11 is the latest or let me say the current operating system if you are going to buy a laptop today if it's a brand new laptop and the laptop is windows laptop meaning that you are buying a dell laptop hp lenovo all of those laptops they run windows os which is also known as operating system if it's a brand new one today in the market it will come with Windows 11 operating system. So what is the difference between this Windows 11 and the previous operating system, which, is, for example, like Windows 10? Windows 11 is more modern. It is faster and cleaner than Windows 10. It comes with better security, new icons, and a center start menu. Now, you can look at the two picture on the screen. You see the difference between Windows 10 and then Windows 11. There are three main areas in Windows 11 which I would like you to pay attention to. The first one is the desktop. This area uh, that you can see, that's the desktop where you power on your computer and it boot, it boot directly to the desktop. So this is the desktop. That's the first area in Windows 11. Then the second one is the task bar. This bar down here is actually known as your task bar. This is task bar. All of this area is our task bar in Windows 11. Down here where you have some icon from this angle to this end is our task bar in Windows 11. And then the third area which is also important and I would like you to pay attention to is the start menu. This is our start menu in Windows 11. Now, the desktop is the main workspace where you see icons and files. Like you can look at my desktop right now, you can see this is an icon, this is an icon, this is an icon, this is an icon, and then you can see also that I have a folder on the desktop. This is a folder. So the desktop is the main workspace where you see icons and files. Why the taskbar that we have below here, this bar is at the bottom, as you can see. Okay, it shows your apps and the pain shortcuts. All the app that, you know, some of the apps that you have on the computer that are pain, they can be pain to the task bar. So that's what the task bar is all about. And then the start menu, this is where you assess your programs, the setting, and then the power option to show down your computer. We are going to look at those three areas in detail shortly. Let's click on that and see what happens. If you click on the start button, you are going to see some other option here. Now, let's first of all look at this. We have our pin. These apps are pinned down here. You can see if you want to see all of the application that you have installed on your computer, you click on all, and then you see all of the application. You can see mine. So you scroll down, and then you see all the application that are installed on your computer. You can click on the back. And then you see the pin. Now, from all of this application, the one that you work with regularly, that is the one that is advisable to be pinned down. So you don't need to click all before you assess the application that you are using 
regularly on your computer. Okay, and then we have what you call the recommended app. This section is for the recommended app. So, and what is that all about? This shows also, you know, some of the items that has been opened in the recent time. So those are recommended items here. And then look at your power button here. So this is our power. If you click on this, you can see the option to sleep, option to lock the computer, to shut down, or to restart your computer. You have that from the power of our uh, button here. How do we assess this pin, the recommended, and then the power option? Remember, from the start menu. So this is where we get into that point, from the start menu. Now, let's talk more about the start menu. I want to pin an app down. So I click back on my start menu. I want to get one more application to this point. I click all. I look at all of the application that I have here. Which one do I need to work with more regularly? Okay, let me go with this. The Eastworld, how do you pin it? Right click on it. Put your cursor on the app. Then right click, you can see pin to start. You click on this. Then let's go back to the start. Menu, you can see among my pin application now, I have the East Swan. So that's how to pin any application on your computer that you need to your start menu. If you want to see everything, like I said, what do you do? You click all, and from here, you see all the apps that are on your computer. Why the recommended file? Those are the suggested file and app that you recently opened on your computer. You can click on this as well. You are going to see more of that. Then we have the search bar. Look at it at the top over here. So you can click on this to use it to quickly find app or setting on your computer. So you can say training or whatever. So you're going to find app on your computer. Everything that you have on your computer, whether they are app, I mean, or files that you have worked on before, you can access them from here. So that is the option that you have from the start menu. So I've just pinned an app and then you have seen how to do that. Now let's assume that I want to get the app that I pinned to the task menu because some of the app here, you might not necessarily need them any longer. So you can just come back to this. So I can come back to this, right click on it again. And then you have the option to do what? On pin from start. Take a look at this. So you go ahead and click on that. So I just get rid of that app from the pin apps on my start menu. So you want to look for a Microsoft Word. You want to, you know, whether you have, you can do that. You can see you have it over there. PowerPoint, you do that. You can access it from the search bar. So don't forget what I said. The search bar here is to search for any application or the file that you have on your computer. Maybe you work on something yesterday or day before yesterday or sometimes ago. You don't know where you save it, but you know the name of the file. You can actually come to the start menu and then come over to the search bar and you are able to find that over there. So that's all I need to show you on the start menu. Let's move to the next one. Now, the taskbar, we are going to be talking about the taskbar now, and we just look at it at the basic level for now. Don't forget what I said earlier on. I said the taskbar helps you to switch between apps quickly. If you want to switch from one app to another, that is what you can do on the taskbar. For example, if I click on File Explorer, and then I click on in, uh, my Microsoft Edge, right? If I click on the Microsoft Edge and I click on the taskbar, I want to switch between the two of them. You can see when I click on the Edge, Edge came up. I click on my File Explorer, the File Explorer. So the taskbar, among other things, it helps you to switch between one app or the other. You can take a look. I click on this. I click on this. So that's how the taskbar is designed for. You can switch from one application to another quickly from there. And any application that you are currently on, that you click on that is active, you're gonna see a kind of underline over there. When I move also to Microsoft Edge, you can see that it's a blue underline over there. So that's how to switch from one uh, icon to another or from one application to another on the taskbar. Now, that's not the only thing that we have for the taskbar, not just the app that you are working with also, 
we have what you call a system tray. Okay, over here, the icon in the corner, this particular corner, uh, it shows to us where you have your Wi-Fi, the time, and then the date, all of the keyboard. This is your keyboard setting. Currently, I'm using an English uh, US keyboard setting. My keyboard setting is currently on US. You are going to see the keyboard setting. You see your Wi-Fi, whether you are connected to the internet. This is your speaker icon. Then this is your battery. This is your time. You have all of this as well in the corner of your task bar. Okay, so if I click on this, we have a system tree. I can click on it to access more uh, of the icon that we have here. How do we go about that? Just go ahead and click this icon so you can see all of the other items that we have here. This is Bluetooth. Uh, this is in Windows security, okay? Defender, Microsoft Defender for Windows for security is over here. And then these are the other apps that I have. And you can see the WhatsApp app. You can see your Bluetooth. So you have all of that from the system tree. So this is the system tree. And the system tree is located on your task bar. Now, that is that about the task bar. Remember, we have three things we are discussing. Uh, briefly, we're talking about the desktop, the start menu, and then the task bar. So now let's turn our attention to the desktop in this section. Understanding the desktop. The desktop is not only for wallpaper. You can see this is a wallpaper. You can actually change your background, the wallpaper, to something else that is appealing to you. Maybe your company logo or your picture or whatever, your family picture. We're going to look at how to do all of that in the course of this training series. Okay? So you can also save a file to this desktop. For example, you can create a new folder on this desktop. What do you do about that? Right-click over here on the desktop and take a look. Look at new. If I put Microsoft on a new folder, so I just created a new folder here, and I can call it Windows, maybe I rename it Training, okay? Or whatever name you want to call the folder. So I just created a folder. You can create a folder on the desktop, apart from the shortcut of the icon that you actually have on the desktop. You can also rename a file or a folder. For example, uh, this one, you can rename it. This is Wireshark. I can click on it, and then you right-click on it you have the option to rename. This is Windows 11, look at the rename, or you press F2 function two. If you have gone through my training on the keyboard, you know, shortcut or the keys you need to know, you will know that you can use F2 to actually rename a file or hub. So right now I can just change the name from Wireshark to something else. So that's how to rename, then if you don't need it again, you can delete. Also one of the file, uh, uh, one of the stuff we have on the desktop is actually the recycle bin. This is like the dustbin in your house or in your kitchen where you trash or you call it a trash can, whatever you call it. Computer trash can also is called the recycle bin and it is usually on the desktop. I would like to know if on your computer you don't have the recycle bin. Please drop that in the comment, in the comment section. Check, do you have the recycle bin on your desktop? So this is the recycle bin on my desktop over here. Okay, it is here. So whatever I delete, like that folder that we created, I just deleted now. It has gone straight to the trash can, which is the recycle bin. So if I want to recover it, I just have to double click to open the recycle bin over here. Then you see a lot of stuff that I've deleted. They are still here. I can empty this recycle bin uh, to make it just, you know, empty because all of this file will still be occupying space on my computer. If I don't do this, I can restore everything. You can empty recycle bin, and then you can restore maybe a particular one out of every other thing. Look at this one. I right click, I click on it just once, and then I have the option restore the selected item. This one, that is if I want to restore this one back to where I deleted it from. But I don't want to do that. Okay, I've deleted it, and I've in fact I want to empty the entire content of the recycle bin. I'll click on this empty recycle bin. This is like you are now throwing your trash can. The one you have in there, you are now taking it uh, maybe to the company or to wherever they are going to trash it completely. As it is now, you cannot recover the file. So if you mistakenly delete a file from your computer, you will find it in the recycle bin. If you have no empty recycle bin, if you have done it like what I've done right now, you're going to need some special software which may cost you some dollars in order to be able to actually recover. And the chances of getting the file 
back in a proper way is very, very slim or narrow. Okay. Are you following the class? If you have any question, please drop it in the comment section. Now, let's look at another thing, which is actually the power option. Because this is very important. I've seen a lot of people, when they are using their computer, they want to shut down, they just press the power button to shut down the computer. That is bad. And that can damage your computer. You don't do that. What do you do? Don't forget, we have the power option. We've discussed that in the start menu. So you click on the start menu, then you come to the lower uh, the right corner on my screen here. You can see it there. Then you click on that. You have the option to put the computer to sleep or you shut down. This is how to shut down your computer properly. Please don't forget about that whatsoever. If you shut down by pressing the power button, you are actually damaging your computer gradually. Okay? Now, it's your turn. I want to give you an exercise to do. Open your, open your start menu, okay, and pin your three most used app or any application. It could be a Microsoft Word. If you don't know any other application, or whatever application that you use more often or frequently, I'd like you to pin it to the start menu on your computer and then create a new folder as well on your desktop like I did earlier on and try to restart your PC using the proper method. Restart your computer using the proper method from the start menu. I want to encourage you to drop that in the comment section if you are able to do it. I like to have that in the comment section. Okay, so this is just the beginning. You now understand the basic layout of Windows 11, which is my objective in this first training series of Windows 11 Essential for Beginner. In the next lesson, we are going to learn how to use the desktop, the taskbar, and the icons more efficiently. So subscribe if you have not done so. And don't just subscribe. I will encourage you to also turn on your notification bell so that when I release the video, you can get notified and then you are not going to miss the other lessons. Like it and share it with other people as well. And then you can join our community. You see it in the home page of the YouTube page there. Just click on join. And because not all the videos that are actually made available for free on this platform, if you join the community, you are going to have access to a lot of other perks. If you have issue with your computer, we have some levels in that particular. If you join the community, where we actually attend to render support for you, whether you want to install any application on your computer is having an headache, you can reach out to me if you are a member of that community. So I will encourage you to actually join our community. Apart from watching this video, you are going to get access to more content and more support from me if you are a member of the community. So thank you for taking your learning journey with me. We're on a journey already. This is just the first lesson. I look forward to meet with you again in the second lesson. Bye for now.